Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn some very basic troubleshooting techniques when you're performing API calls, whether you're using AppGyver or other internet platforms, stay tuned, I'm covering some basics in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now if you're interested, I do have a more broad API overview video where I go into this article in a bit more detail. I'll put the link to that in the description. But for the sake of today's video, we'll be assuming that you are either a beginner or intermediate user with APIs, and you're just trying to figure out, okay, something should be working, but it's not. So we'll be using AppGyver, which is a free codeless development tool, and we will be using the sample app I have, which is a chat app I built with AppGyver. So we're using a free tier in AppGyver and a free tier in Firebase. Now, if you want to get this for yourself, you can download it from the free section of the codeless apps portion of codelessfix.com. So you can go there, check the codeless apps section, and I have a free downloads area where you can download a couple of different apps that I've built, and you can import them into AppGyver. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to start with some, some very, very basic concepts. So what we're doing in this video is we're going to show an error and actually how to fix it. So when we click this set username option in the My Account page, it's doing a post, and what it's doing is posting that username in this section in Firebase. So when we go to Profiles, it's right here. So let's try posting something and try to diagnose what the issue is. So in this case, we'll just type in some random letters and click Set. Now you'll see we have an error, and this is an error that I built in, so we don't know what's going on, but we know it's not working. If we right click, we can click inspect and this opens something called developer tools. You can change device types and dimensions here, but the part that we're looking at is going to be focusing on this network tab, basically saying what's going to the server or wherever and back. So you can clear it at any time and you can stop if you want to basically stop collecting that information. In this case, we'll click clear We'll click record, we'll click set, and then we'll click stop. Now we have a sample of where these errors are occurring. So we'll try to find the one that's problematic because in this case, I know that I have a couple of different calls going and some of them should probably be failing. For example, a check to see if a username is available or not. So as we go through these calls, we see they all have the same error. 403, missing or insufficient permissions, permission denied. Now, if we look at these requests and we see what type they are, you'll see we have a get, a post, or a delete, and a post. So it's checking the username, deleting one if it exists, and then posting the new one. Now, if you want to trouble check your payload, you can click here and see what issues may be occurring. In this case, mine is correct. But when we look at the response section, you'll see we have this response here. Now for me, I know, okay, I know what I did wrong. Let's go to my rules section of Firebase and let's change this to true. That means that I have an open database now and I should be able to make these calls. So let's click clear and then we'll try to set username again and you'll see that we are still getting some errors. So in this case, sometimes when you're changing rules for Firebase, it could be that it may take a second or two for those to take effect. So you'll see now when I do it, it says changes saved. So we're going to click stop and go through and just make sure that the ones that we made are the ones that actually went through and should go through. So you'll see we have the same request for the most part. And when we go to the data section in Firebase and go to profiles, you'll see we have that new one down here. So everything's going through as expected. Now, in the event that you were to introduce some kind of maybe a different type of issue. So let's go to the variables tab. Our page variable for username is text. I'm not sure if this would cause an issue or not, so we can test this together really quickly. Let's say we wanna to try to send a complex object and then we'll click save and we'll go back to our username tab, go to the account, we have some letters here, and let's click cancel and then record and set and then stop. 
so that one didn't that one actually worked as expected i guess the object type is okay to pass through so nothing serious on that front so the idea here is <clears throat> if you were sending data that wasn't valid or something was formatted incorrectly you would typically see those errors here now if you're ever interested for example if you see one that doesn't work so if we clear this and click record and click set let's pick one of these that doesn't work so for example this is checking if a username is there if we double click it you'll see we have the error that pops up here status not found so in some cases maybe you're doing a get call and this is checking for a username to see if it's available. It's good if it's not available because that means we can take it. But in this case, if you were searching for a record that wasn't there, this will tell you it's not found. And then you can figure out, okay, am I checking the right URL? What am I doing? So this will give you more granular detail in the header section preview and response to look at information that's being sent or received. So I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.